I'd like to call this uh, special council meeting to order. Good evening, all. We're going to begin this meeting by acknowledging that the land on which we gather collectively is a traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Mississaugas of the New Credit, and the Anishinaabe people. Madam Clerk, the roll call, please. All members of council are present, Your Worship. Thank you. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Councillor Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I have a conflict with PDS-25-2020, the Oaks at Six Miles Creek, as my business does business with one of the business partners of West Wind Niagara Developments. Okay. Uh, any other declarations? There being none, we have no addendum this evening, but we I do have some announcements. And I want to start by um, addressing the recent events that um, arose out of the untimely, unwarranted, and violent death of George Floyd, a citizen of the United States. Racism, bigotry, and prejudice are among the basest elements of human character. For those of us fortunate to have been born and raised among the majority population in our community, we can a position of privilege, no matter how sensitive we are, because we have not experienced life in the minority. The history of humanity is stained with examples of individuals or groups persecuting others because they are different. Skin color, religion, ethnicity, physical or mental ability, sexual orientation, beliefs, all have been the basis of persecution, violence, and murder at various times around the world. Ancestors on both sides of my family were persecuted for religious beliefs during different centuries and in different parts of Europe. But that was their experience, not mine. I cannot begin to imagine how it must feel to be called derogatory names, denied access to public places, bypassed for school, business, or professional opportunities, threatened with violence, let alone death, treated as a nobody. We in Canada are frequently smug when we see and read about the troubles of our neighbor to the south. We have our own history of racism, bigotry, and prejudice, unfortunately not all in the past. With, while Canada and the United States pride ourselves on welcoming newcomers from around the world, this is not a universal sentiment among our population. Portery in particular has been a place of refuge and a safe haven to those seeking to escape persecution, slavery, and tyranny for 250 years. United Empire Loyalists, Pennsylvania Trekkers, American slaves, migrants and refugees from the four corners of the earth have come to Canada through Fort Erie, some of whom have stayed here to create a new home. We are richer as a community for the diversity they bring to the fabric of our society. Ironically, we displace the indigenous people across our land. I commend those who have taken a stand against racism, bigotry, and prejudice. We all have a part to play in making Canada a better place for everyone, everyone. About 15 years ago, the Fortery Multicultural Center hosted a diversity and inclusion forum. It was attended by several hundred people and featured a number of prominent human rights speakers. As a result, a Diversion and Inclusion Advisory Committee was established. That initiative eventually withered. Its right reconstitution is now long overdue. I've begun discussions to resurrect the Diversity and Inclusion Adv Advisory Committee and will seek individuals who represent the broad spectrum of identifiable minority groups who suffer prejudice and bigotry in our community. I will be seeking the support of council since this issue goes to the very heart of what it means to be a caring and welcoming community. We can all do better. The second uh, announcement relates to that in that uh, June the 20th is World Refugee Day. And we've been notified by the United Nations um, that there are 50 million uh, people around the world who have left their homes uh, because of persecution or danger. So I hope that we'll all remember on June the 20th the um, individuals around the world who are displaced from their homes. Third item is, um, I've been getting some calls from uh, 
residents, uh, and I know councillors have raised this issue as well with respect to the Niagara Parks Commission and its maintenance of parklands in Fort Erie. Um, I've had a couple of conversations with uh, senior staff officials at the uh, Niagara Parks Commission and um, was assured that cutting would begin uh, since they've now hired more people and the weather is becoming more clement. Um, today, during my conversation with uh, the CEO, I, I advised him that if the Niagara Parks Commission was a private property owner in Fort Erie, we would have issued orders by now with respect to the state of some of their uh, parklands, particularly along the, the parkway and to the uh, west of the old fort. So I've been assured that there will be some uh, action. Uh, and I noticed today that there have been uh, cutters out. Uh, Mather Arch was recently done. Uh, the Mather Arch actually and uh, Jarvis Street isn't too bad beyond that uh, and towards the fort uh, needs a lot of work. So that's on, on our radar. The uh, fourth item I wanted to mention uh, very briefly because I know that Councillor McDermott would also like to speak to this is uh, last week, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday evening, Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning, we had a very unusual storm. We had uh, torrents of rain and we had hailstones, um, which um, I'm sure most of us thought that windows were gonna be broken in our homes and on our cars. And, and I know that there was a lot of damage done. A lot of trees were, were taken down. Uh, the, the town staff, Niagara Parks Commission, uh, Canadian Niagara Power, were all in force uh, working on that. So I wanted to thank all of those individuals who are engaged in that. And Councillor McDermott will have some further comments uh, later in the, uh, during the meeting. Uh, with respect to um, the fourth item, today the province, the Premier announced that uh, the province will be reopening uh, economically by region. And... Uh, Unfortunately, Niagara has been lumped in with Hamilton and the GTA uh, so that we will not be progressing to the second stage of opening at this time. Uh, that means that all of the current emergency orders remain in effect until there's a change in our status, which we are hopeful will occur shortly. For specific particulars on um, what stage two would look like, I would refer people to the uh, Province of Ontario website um, and uh, I'll have further comments on this uh, probably midweek with respect to our status in Fort Erie. The fifth item uh, relates to um, emergency orders and that is um, the uh, bylaw enforcement incident that occurred last week in Ridgeway. I'm sure that all of the uh, members of council and staff are, are now fully aware of the um, uh, matter. Senior staff has been charged with looking into the situation and will provide comments to council by midweek. Um, and um, until that point in time, I'm going to hold my comments, but uh, we can be assured that um, any action that's necessary will be recommended by our staff. Finally, I want to state that each day we are made aware of gestures and acts of kindness and generosity in our community. It could be a corporate organization or a group of individuals or a single individual doing something truly meaningful and selfless to help others. It reminds us that even in the worst of times, there is goodness all around us. Uh, and on behalf of myself and members of council, I wanna thank all of the Good Samaritans in Fort Erie because they do help to remind us that no matter how bleak our situation, things can be better and will be better. That then takes us to um, the consent agenda. Are there any items that anyone wishes removed from the consent agenda? If not, Councilor McDermott, you have the resolution to put the consent agenda on the floor. Thank you, Worship. Um, moved by myself, seconded by Councilor Noyes, the Council approves the consent agenda items as recommended. Are there any questions or comments? Excuse Councilor, me. sorry, did I miss something? Yes, PDS 25 needs to be removed due to Councillor Butler's pecuniary interest. PDS 25, correct? PDS 25, yes. That's the very first item. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Clerk. It's, uh, so we're going to take PDS 25 out 
uh, of that and um, we'll deal with that separately. So Councillor McDermott, can you put your resolution on the floor? Less PDS 25, 2020. Your Worship, moved by myself, seconded by uh, Councillor Noyes, that council approves the consent agenda items as recommended with the exception of PDS 25-2020. Any questions or comments arising out of any of the uh, contents? Councillor Noyes. Yes, just one question to, um, to the fire chief. In regards to the new dispatch services that will come in, I guess, in about two years, um, with the new provider, are, will our rural areas be serviced well with our firefighters who won't have any trouble getting their, um, their dispatches? Chief. Through you uh, to the councillor, the reason, uh, part of the reason we're cha uh, changing or making the recommendation to change is that we have a very robust system now that works uh, within our community, um, both rurally uh, and uh, urban in the urban areas uh, to secure that and not incur any more costs for the system itself. Uh, we're making this recommendation. So the answer is yes. Thank you. Any other councillors? Councillor Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to comment on CS-09-2020 with respect to the BIA um, cutting their budget uh, in half in order to meet the, um, to give back to the business owners. And the hope was that the business owners would then um, supplement some of the tenants with their rents to lessen the burden. So um, we're hoping that uh, that this will be well received and uh, that moving forward, those tenants will actually receive some relief where they wouldn't have qualified with any of the government grants. Thank you. Any other councillors with respect to the items in the consent agenda? If not, I'll call the question. All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Councillor McDermott, would you then um, move the um, approval of PDS 25 2020, please. Yes, we're by myself, seconded by Councillor Noyes, that Council approves the consent agenda item PDS 25 2020 is recommended. Thank you. Are there any questions by members of Council? I just had a couple, um, and I'm not sure, uh, Ms. Dolch, whether perhaps you could answer these. What will the status be of the sidewalk on Thunder Bay Road as phase three proceeds? Is that what we're waiting for? Um, I would have to look into that. I don't know uh, the status of that sidewalk on uh, phase three at this point. And well, I think Mr. Walsh might be able to help answer that. Sure, Mr. Walsh. Uh, certainly, Mr. Mayor. We've got that in the budget. Uh, I don't have the exact timing, but it's uh, just... So that would be from, from the Oaks to uh, Road. Okay, so we missed part of that. That may have been uh, by design or it may have been inadvertent. So is, is this time to be, the sidewalk is time for phase three? Uh, yes, it's in the budget for the next uh, two to three years out. Okay, and uh, can you tell me what the status is of what was to have been a roundabout at Thunder Bay Road and Butler's Drive? It, it's, is that it's, going still in, it's still in the budget and they're all part of the same project, which is the urbanization of Thunder Bay Road from uh, Ridge. And that roundabout, that would be paid for by the developer? Uh, through development charges. Yeah, okay. Are there any other questions? If not, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the resolution? And opposed, that is carried. That takes us then to reports. And Mr. Butler, you need a second. So we don't have any resolutions for the reports. We're just gonna ask for movers, Madam Clerk. Or is, no, I guess Land Matters is it. Councillor Butler, that's you. Yes. Councillor, you're muted. 
Oh, sorry. You're, you're muted. Now you're good. Sorry. Sorry, thank you. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor McDermott. Um, that CAO-11 LC-04-2020 Land Matters, May 21st, 2020 Land Committee Meeting and June 2nd, 2020 Special Land Committee Meeting Minutes. That Council receives the May 21st, 2020 Land Committee Meeting Minutes attached as Appendix 1 to Report Number CAO-11 LC-04-2020 and further that council receives the June 2nd, 2020 special land committee meeting minutes. Sorry. Attached as appendix two to report number CAO 11 LCO 4 2020 and further. Sorry, that council approves the recommendations contained in appendix three. Sorry. <laughs> Fine. Are there any questions or comments arising out of the report? Councillor Noyes. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, in regards to the, the comments made about the encroachments on the road allowances, uh, particularly on the beach ones, um, there were some comments made by yourself in regards to that we spent a lot of money opening of the road allowances for public use and they need to be protected. And I've actually had a few um, emails regarding this that some of the um, road allow beach road allowances that we've opened are now being, how do you say, encroached upon again by the, the, again, like, you know, doing it again, and they're, they're putting, um, the residents on either side are putting, you know, basically occupying this, the space and putting things on there and basically encroaching again. And I know I had a very brief um, conversation with, with Ms. Stolt saying, oh, what, what can we do about this? Because if we spent that amount of time and that amount of money opening them, and I, it was a several, I think over a decade project, to let them kind of just go by the, the wayside and kind of become encroached again, we're gonna lose what we've gained. And I think there needs to be some kind of a monitoring and also some kind of a significant penalty so that if they do encroach, I mean, it's just like, you know, I'll pay if I get caught, um, doesn't seem to be a deterrent um, to them. So I would think that the fine, if any, I don't know if Ms. Dolch, there was a fine yet or not, just basically a notice, I understand the way it's written now, just a notice, you know, get your get your stuff off the uh, off our pro off the town property, and if they comply with them, that's fine. If they don't comply, then they they can be fined, or we can remove it and then charge them. But I think there needs to be a little bit more teeth in that, because basically, if they don't get caught, they're doing it. Uh, but, so I do think we need to look at that to make sure that all that money we spent opening them um, isn't isn't lost. Ms. Dolch, is that something that staff is looking at? Through you to the council, that's correct. We'll, we'll, we'll monitor some of the road allowances. Um, obviously with staff and resources, it is a bit difficult, but we'll keep, we'll try and keep an eye on it a few times a year to make sure on the encroachments. Um, through the waterfront encroachment policy, we do have the ability to remove encroachments, provide them a letter, uh, notify them of the encroachments and the removal of such. Um, I do know in terms of um, highway occupancy permits, in terms of them accessing our property, we do have a fine system in place, which we'll be considering this evening, uh, which Mr. Walsh put together. Um, so that is a, an AMPS penalty uh, that we will um, enforce if uh, that's not achieved. But in terms of the actual encroachments themselves, that's through that policy and we'd have to uh, look at letters if, if we're dealing, especially with the one we've already removed encroachments from. Councilor Noyes, if you and other members of council are made aware of uh, potential encroachments, I would urge you to let staff know so yes, they can I'm, at least. Yes, I will be them. flipping the last complaint um, probably tomorrow to, to Kira. Great. Councilor Luberts. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Redica. Just to follow up on that, a few years ago, we uh, dealt with the encroachments in the road allowances at Waverly Beach. And there was three streets out there, Pierce and uh, Rose Avenue and and another one, but, uh, and we put bullards up, you know, to stop vehicle traffic. And can we not do the same on other uh, road allowances? In fact, that was, uh, that's referred to in the minutes and Mr. Walsh, um, you made reference or someone did during the, uh, 
maybe it was Mr. Hutton during the course of the meeting. Um, and there were some road allowances that were identified, some beaches that were identified, and that there would be some bollards or barricades. How is that progressing? Right now, we haven't uh, taken any action, uh, Mayor. We have had discussions among staff as to next steps. So we are moving forward. Okay. Anything further, Councillor Luberts? Yeah, I'm just wondering if maybe staff should bring back a report on how we can deal with, um, I mean, we read it here in land committee many minutes, but I would, uh, I would think that we would, uh, we, we should see some kind of report on how staff plans on dealing with it. I, I read the minutes as well, and I see that, you know, there was suggestions of stopping up and closing road allowances, but, you know, here we go again, people want access, and then we're going to start limiting access to the residents, which I don't particularly agree with. I don't but think there's any suggestion we're going to be want to stop up and close them. No, I don't think there's any suggestion we're going to do that, Councillor Lewards. That was something that was raised. Certainly, we're not going to be restricting public access to the uh, to the waterfront along our road allowances. Um, I would suggest that infrastructure services could perhaps discuss this in the next subcommittee, and uh, it may very well be that a status report uh, should be forthcoming at some point. Yeah, because if I remember correctly, when we did those things down at Waverly Beach, that we were going to follow up on other road allowances in Fort Erie. And uh, I think it's time that we take a hold of all the road allowances and uh, make sure that they're properly identified and marked. And if there's any encroachments, either we remove them or have the uh, owners remove them. Same as we did at Waverly. Thank you. Anything further, Councillor Luberts? No, that's good. Anyone else on the uh, land committee minutes? Now I'll call the question. All those in favor of the uh, report? None opposed. That is carried. That takes us to um, alterations to the 2020 operations plan for Bay Beach. And Councillor Noyes, I have you as having that resolution. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, move by my Myself and second by Councillor Lupert said, I 25 2020 alterations to the 2020 operational plan for Bay Beach. The council receives report number IS 25 2020 on the implementation of the Bay Beach operational plan for information purposes. Questions or comments? <laughs> Councillor McDermott. Uh, yes, well, number one, I, I want to thank, you, thank uh, you for the report. Um, seems to be very well thought out and um, something I can support. I just have uh, uh, one question is, um, I know the passes can be picked up at the arena. Uh, I guess that's every arena, Ridgeway, Fort Erie and such. I just would like to know what the hours are. And secondly, will uh, Janine be communicating this on the social media and wherever else she goes with that? We will be, uh, we will be uh, communicating that through the website, Facebook, other, other met methods. Mr. Walsh, you can probably respond to the question about where the passes can be obtained and what the hours of operation are. Um, we don't have specific uh, hours set yet. Um, that will be part of the, uh, the communication plan coming out tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. I know there we are targeting uh, this Saturday, July 13th, sorry, June 13th for the initial uh, sale of passes uh, be available at the arenas. They'll be alternating back and forth Saturday at uh, one arena, Sunday at the other arena, following weekend, it'll be reversed. Uh, but uh, there will be uh, a comprehensive uh, distribution plan um, available through social media. Thank you. Councilor McDermott, anything further? No, thank you, Worship. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Councilor Noyes. Yes, um, my, my question, uh, Mayor Redekop, is about the residency. Um, and I think I emailed, I think I emailed different, the council on this. Is that, for, how does this work for short-term rentals? Are uh, those people who are renting in short-term, they're not, to, to me, they're not, they're not residents, so they shouldn't be allowed on the beach. But I know that the, yeah, are we going to, how, 
how we're going to deal with that, the short-term rentals. So that's a good segue, uh, Councillor Noyes, into my comment uh, and senior staff's comment that this is a plan that is in flux. There are some aspects of it that are shifting right now, including that aspect of the report, as well as when the beach may open. So I'll go to um, the CAO who can, who can respond to at least the opening day, now the new target date. And if you can respond to the other, that'd be great too. Uh, sure, through your, your mayor to the councillor. Um, the, the target date was June 18th. Um, that was our, our original thought. We've, we've rethought that. We're looking at a target date of June 26th now, only because we want to collaborate the opening of our beach with the other municipalities. So uh, there's been discussions with them. Um, they're not going to be ready to open theirs for the 18th. Uh, so now the target date is the 26th. Um, I can tell you that I had an earlier meeting today with our communications uh, advisor and our EDTS. They have put together a MARCOM plan. So it's, it's about getting this information out to the public, but as well as we are at the same time are going to market the businesses near the beaches so that, uh, you know, stay at home, you know, support your, your local businesses because it will be just a matter of time before they're open. Um, and so there's a whole plan being put in place. We're going to have some drawings put up a beach where the businesses are, other activities to do in, in town as well. As far as the passes, they'll be issued to the residents. But our thought was that as well as the owners of the short-term rentals are taxpayers and that they should be allowed to have passes as well. So we would give them uh, up to four passes. And if they wanted to give those to the renters of the short-term rental, I think it's only fair that, that we do so. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Answer noise. It, it answers my question. I'm not necessarily saying I agree with the answer because I'm a taxpayer too. And if I have people visiting my house, which I don't, but let's say they extend it to, to 10 people or whatever, and I can socially distance that they come to me can, you know, I'm a taxpayer, can they not then go to the beach if I give them permission? Um, I just think we're going to have a problem with opening it to, to, to tourists, basically, who, who rent, but not tourists who drive in our renting. I, I can go either way with this, but I can see it being very problematic in regards to um, controlling the, the amount of people on the beach. Before we said it was just going to be the residents of Fort Erie, um, not necessarily even taxpayers, because there's a lot of residents of Fort Erie that aren't taxpayers. They just, you know, they live in, in apartments. Um, and now we're going to extend it to the Airbnbs and give them, or short-term rentals and give them four passes per. Well, is, it, is that going to be like the, the drop-off, like just four? What if it's a huge place and they have 12 bedrooms? And they have, I don't, I'm not being very clear on this, but I think this is going to be problematic. No, I think it's clear. I mean, is, is the max, Mr. CAO, is the max four per residence? That, that was our original thought that we would keep it to four. We didn't want to uh, give out too many. Um, you know, this way we control it and we can still try to maintain the 2000 uh, maximum per day uh, on the beach. So, so that was our original thought. Um, there again, I'm just repeating myself, but I think it's only fair that these are taxpayers um, and, you know, they should have a, be able to go to the beach. And as well, Councillor, uh, if we did give you four passes or if you come in and got your four passes, I, I don't see an issue with you sharing those with uh, family members who come to visit. Um, I, I, I don't see an issue with it unless Council thinks otherwise. If I can... Please do. That's that's not quite what the, the what the report says because doesn't it basically say it's going to be limited to to residents of Fort Erie? Well, that's what I said. The report's somewhat in flux. There was originally at the time this report was prepared, as I understand it, there was the thinking that there wouldn't be issuance of uh, commercial related passes, which is short term rentals. Um, that seems to have shifted along with the date and possibly some other things. This is an operational plan. It's still in flux. And what um, we're receiving it for information. And so staff is trying to give us 
the most current up-to-date information, but there may be further changes as this unfolds. Yeah, and is that, Mr. Mr. Cook, is that, is that fair? That's, that's very fair. And I don't know if, if uh, Mr. Walsh has had any further discussions today with Mr. Hutton that he wants to add to this or things have changed at all with, uh, like I say, this is fluid. This is, uh, we're, we're trying to get this ready to open as soon as possible. So we have been changing our, our train of thought uh, even as we prepared this uh, report. Mr. Walsh, did you want to get your order? Um, just uh, that the information in this report was was authored and finalized about a week and a half ago. And uh, as everybody knows, uh, the, the province is, uh, as we've, we've said, is the province is in flux right here. Last week's announcement of Airbnbs and short-term rentals, I think caught everybody off guard. So that wasn't addressed in here. Commercial uh, passes, uh, we'll, we'll have a decision shortly as well and uh, it will be communicated out through the plan as well. Councilor Noyes, you still have the floor. Yeah. And again, I, I understand this is in flux and I understand this is a, how it puts it, this is the, uh, an initial access type thing it's, and, there, and things will change. My only concern is that one of the reasons we are being so restrictive is because we are concerned about the COVID-19 and the tourists bringing it in. Now, although I have sympathy for the short-term rentals, and that they haven't been able to rent their, their properties and that because of because of the restrictions and things. They they are not taxpayers. The, the, the owners are the taxpayers. The people who are renting from them aren't taxpayers and they're not residents. So I would say that if if this if this thing passes, you either have to change something in this report and add to it, because that's not how the report reads. It basically says um, resident passes, residents and taxpayers of Fort Erie. And people who are visiting are neither. And so, Councillor Noyes, if you, if you want to take a position with respect to this, then I think you should um, move an amendment to the report. If you, if you want to make um, a statement and you want Council's support with respect to an aspect of the operation, I think you're going to need to move an amendment. Well, with all due respect, I think the report supports my position because it's mute on short-term rentals. I can't find anything that says with the exception of short-term rentals. The way I'm reading it, it says residents and taxpayers of Fort Erie. So I, I'm not the one who would have to make the amendment. Somebody else would have to make an amendment to include um, providing for or passes to uh, short-term rental. I'm going to go to uh, I'm going to go to the CAO, and then I'm going to go to Councillor Butler. Yeah, I just want to add. Uh, it, it does state that to taxpayers of Fort Erie. So what you're suggesting is it would be okay to provide passes to the beach to those who own the short-term rentals. Yeah. The problem is, how do you control them giving them to those that are renting? Um, we would have to then, and this is what we're trying to get away with, verify that they're residents or not when they got to the beach. And this is, this is what we're trying to not have to do because we, as much as we will have individuals at the gates and exit, we are trying to get away from them interacting or touching anything with those individuals. So that's the dilemma we had the whole time putting this together is how do we do this um, without asking for proof of ID and so forth. We were hoping we could do that at the, at the arenas and have that sorted out prior to them getting to the beach. So there is a little hiccup in the process. And, and you know what, if that's council's preference that we not give it to those individuals, I think that's the only way we control it is we would not give it to them because I'm not sure how you control who they give them to. I'm gonna to go to Councillor Butler. Councillor Butler, you have to unmute. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, um, I, I disagree with uh, Councillor Noyes in, in with respect to how you read that because if, um, if an owner has a um, short-term rental in the, the town of Fort Erie, they are paying taxes on it. Therefore, they're a taxpayer within the town of Fort Erie. And if they only have four passes, if I have four passes and I own my residence, 
and I have, just as you mentioned, as an analogy, friends or family coming over, I'm, I'm definitely sharing those passes with my friends and my family. So why wouldn't then the short term um, rental owner do the same? To me, it just makes perfect sense. You're going to get those four passes and you're going to leave them on a weekly basis to whoever visits your home. I think that's fair. Um, but I wanted to ask you, uh, you mentioned, um, uh, Mr. Cookett, uh, RCAO, uh, you mentioned a, a rolling out regarding um, talking about businesses in the Crystal Beach area. And I'm hoping that you meant that that's going to also include the Ridgeway Core and the Jarvis Street Core. <laughs> To your worship, absolutely. It's a, it's a marketing communication plan uh, for Fort Erie. Um, you know, we are looking at, and, it, and it's just not there. So we talked about, you know, visiting historical sites throughout Fort Erie, uh, taking, taking advantage of uh, the Friendship Trail and so forth. So those are all the things we're talking about, and we're trying to encourage those in Fort Erie or surrounding Fort Erie to take advantage of that. You know, here's our time to stay at home. Have you seen some of these things? Have you have you been to some of these restaurants? And hopefully they'll open shortly. Um, so that's what we're trying to promote throughout Port Erie. So, yes. Great, thank you. And then one last comment with reference to um, those passes for the short-term rental operators. I just wanted to uh, make mention that those visiting uh, those short-term rentals are actually, you know, pushing their funds out uh, throughout uh, the town of Fort Erie. So it's really a, a, a win-win kind of situation. It's a compromise. Thank you. I'll go to Councillor Luberts, um, and then I'm going to go to Councillor Zanko. And then if uh, any of the other councillors who haven't spoken want to go, I'll go to them. And then Councillor Noyes, I'll eventually get back to you. Councillor Luberts. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Redekop. Uh Just to follow up on uh, Mr. Walsh's comments about uh, when the uh, report was authored and finalized, the uh, province hadn't uh, uh, had restriction. We weren't allowed to have any short-term rental and uh, they were shutting them down or whatever. So uh, seeing all of that, I think maybe we could make an amendment or make a, uh, a motion to uh, request staff to provide us with uh, a position on short-term rentals for information purposes as well. And uh, then uh, we uh, will have that as well. I think they've given us their position. Their position is that if the short-term rental has a property owner that's paying taxes, that person would qualify for passes and those passes can be given to the short-term rental um, occupants. Uh, Mr. Walsh. Yes, that, that's correct, Mr. Mayor. I just want to clarify, there's two different passes. Our original thought before COVID struck was our short-term rental owners would buy a commercial pass um, and it was an unlimited number. When COVID struck, uh, as the report says, we've, we've killed the commercial pass for the but notwithstanding that, as, as everybody knows, there's still taxpayers. They can come in and get a resident pass. And, um, we've discussed the difficulty in restricting non-residents from going to the beach, but, but certainly attendance will be limited. So, Councillor Luberts, it, it should be clear that staff's intentions through this operational plan are to issue passes to all property uh, owners, taxpayers, and if that happens to be a short-term rental owner, they can provide that to their um, short-term renters, just like any one of us could provide a pass to somebody visiting us. All right, yeah, no, I don't have a problem with that. I'm just uh, saying if, if there's an issue with it, then uh, I don't see a problem with putting uh, an amendment forward so that we we're clear that short-term rentals is included in the pass process. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think I we hate to see somebody rent their, their unit out and then uh, the people that are here on vacation can't go to the beach. Yeah, I think staff has made their position pretty clear. Yeah. Um, so um, anything further, Councillor Luberts? No, that's fine. Councillor Zanko. I 
I thank you, um, Your Worship. Through you to uh, Mr. Cookett, I, I guess my, my concern is that we are extending that date again. Um, if the intention is to only allow residents access to the beach, I mean, by extending it another week now, that's three weeks. I don't know about my colleagues, but I've been getting multiple calls about residents wanting to walk on the beach. Um, obviously, everybody is confined to their homes right now. There, there's not a lot of things that people can do. Um, the residents of Fort Erie are very excited to get to use the beach. Um, so I, I understand what you're saying about extending it because other uh, municipalities aren't ready either. But if our intentions is if our intentions are for residents use and why would we extend that date again? So, Councillor Zanko, I'm, I'm gonna cut in before the CAO can comment. I know this has been a topic of discussion among the CAOs. It's definitely been a topic of discussion among the mayors. We've tried over the last three months to uh, maintain alignment with respect to the various policies and to get 12 municipalities of differing makeups um, to remain aligned on all of the major issues is, is quite unusual. We've been able to do that. As time wears on, it becomes more and more challenging. The, um, some of these communities were planning on opening July the 1st, which is too far out. Um, some of them just weren't ready for J June the 18th. And so um, as a matter of maintaining alignment with our neighbors, um, who, uh, some of whom have accommodated us on some issues, um, that's the position that we are recommending. CAO, do you have any further comments? Uh, no, you've captured it. And, and the reason for their delay in, in opening their beaches is uh, the hiring of students uh, and getting, getting them up and running in their, in their areas uh, prepared. We still have a fair bit of work to do at our, at our Bay Beach as well. Uh, if anybody's been out there recently, the ramp is probably has three feet of sand on it. It's got to be all cleared off and beach needs some uh, some grooming and so forth. Um, our students aren't geared up to start quite yet. Um, so that's the other part. We've got to make sure that we, we're properly staffed to get it open. So uh, I hear what you're saying because tomorrow's going to be an extremely hot day. Um, I will be having a conference call tomorrow evening with the CAOs and we will be discuss discussing this, but I think we're geared up to make the announcement uh, for the 26th tomorrow because we wanted to get that out to social media as soon as possible. So it, what we would have to do then is maybe delay um, putting out our notice uh, as far as the opening of the beach for another day until I got a, re a response from CA CAOs to see if, if they are okay with us opening a little bit earlier than most of the others. So that's something I can discuss with Kelly and Sean in the morning just to see if we can get it open earlier or not. I think I think that would make a lot of sense, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Cookett, if you could if you could delay that announcement for a day to see what comes out of your uh, discussions with the CAOs. I'll, I'll have a mayor's meeting, I think, Wednesday morning, um, and we'll be talking about this as well. Um, anything further, Councillor Zanko? Uh, no, but thank you. I, I think that uh, residents would greatly appreciate that conversation. Well, next weekend, the weather's supposed to be crummy, so who knows? It's up and down. Councillor Noyes, uh, any other councillors who haven't spoken yet? Councillor Noyes, back to you. Thank you, Mayor Redekop. Um I think I'm gonna be in the minority of this, but again, I read the report or at least that one particular paragraph. It actually supports my position. Um, and I'll read you two, well, the one I've already read. Patrons holding a resident pass, residents and taxpayers of Fort Erie. And then Which page are you on? Down, Which page are you on? Two, um, second paragraph under the Bay Beach admission, and then it, and then it goes further to stay. Um, it, the first step promotes citizens staying within their community as recommended by the province government. That means ours and, and others. Further, it limits the number of beach patrons by allowing only residents on the beach. So it basically supports my position. It goes further to say that this is phase one and phase two would be opened up a little bit. It would be a little bit more relaxed. Second phase promotes tourism in limited capacity, but still maintains control over the number of patrons on the beach. So I think, again, I don't have to make an amendment to this because it supports my position. But if we're going to now make, let's uh, counter um, Butler's position in regards to that you can hand the passes out, that if I have two passes, I guess my husband and I were both taxpayers, I can give them to whoever I want. I, <laughs> I have a problem with that. I think that's the, that what, what we were trying to avoid. 
um, that they can be non-residents that kind of flies in the face of the report. If I can, if I can have, if I, let's say I have eight kids, I get eight passes. Is that how it works? And I can give it to eight people. Hey, they, they, I, I don't get it because we're, we're having them come. They have to identify that they're a resident of Fort Erie. And then we're saying, yeah, but you can pass it to your family and friends. It's exactly what was happening last year, Councillor Noyes. Um, yeah, but, but the report is contradictory because on page four, it clearly states admission only to Fort Erie residents slash taxpayers. However, um, let's, let's have an amendment to make it clear. Um, would someone like to amend the, the um, report so that it includes um, taxpayers who have short-term rental facilities? They would qualify for passes. Does anybody want to make that amendment? Councilor Luberts? Um, this is a report, although it's a council meeting. Do I need a seconder, Madam Clerk? Seconder, Councilor Dubinow? Any, any debate or discussion about that? So the resolution, the amendment is that it would include uh, passes available to owners of short-term rental facilities. Councillor Noyes. Even though I won't be supporting this amendment, I think you might want to put in the number of passes per, per each short-term rental, as opposed to just leaving it open. I'm going to leave that to uh, staff to sort out, unless you want to move an amendment to the amendment. I'll pass. <laughs> okay. Any other questions or comments? It's going to be a problem. I'm going to call oh, Councillor Zanko. I just have one comment, um, uh, particularly for Councillor Noyes. I don't really understand um, why we wouldn't either want to allow uh, short-term rentals to have those passes. I mean, I, I know what you're saying. We're trying to control COVID, but short-term rentals have now been approved. They're going to be um, residents from all other areas coming to our restaurants, to um, grocery stores. So I think by not allowing them to go to the beach, we're not really protecting uh, our, our, our municipality further. That's just my thought. So I will support that amendment. Any other questions or comments, Councilor Luberts? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Redekop. Uh, I just want to comment. The only reason that I'm agreeing to bring in the, the amendment forward is just to clarify everything that's in the report. I understand and uh, Councillor Noyes' uh, concern that it's not mentioned in the report. And Mr. Walsh has stated that this uh, report wasn't uh, uh, put together when uh, short-term rentals were available. So it's, it's, it's pretty vague as to uh, what we're going to do with short-term rentals. So bringing the amendment forward will clarify everything and clear things up. Everybody will understand and uh, staff will know how many passes they'll issue to the short-term rental uh, owners. Any other questions or comments before I call the question on the amendment? All those in favor of the amendment? Opposed? Carried. Okay, so the amended um, report is now on the floor for consideration. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the amended recommendations? Opposed? That is carried. That was easy. Um, I hope it's easier to manage the beach. That takes us to uh, new business and inquiries. Councilor McDermott. Oh, yes, Your Worship. Um, just want to talk about the storm a little bit. Uh, you pretty much covered it, but um, Bowen Road and Highland was uh, a total mess. And so there are lots of people to thank, including the infrastructure team led by it was Sean that day. Um, if you had looked at the damage at uh, nine o'clock in the morning, you would never have thought that that mess would be cleaned up by five o'clock at night. So I want to thank uh, uh, Kelly and his team, Sean especially, the contractors that helped out. And um, I just like to add that the residents that morning were very helpful. Um, helping each other and uh, trying to make a laneway on Highland Avenue, which I thought was uh, pretty different. Those are two very close-knit communities that 
uh, really think about each other um, when we have problems like this. So they're all to be commended. And as a counselor for the ward, I'm very grateful for all the help that we have. Thank you, Councilor McDermott. Um, Councilor Zanko. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Just actually a question to you. Um, given the recent announcement by the province today and the fact that they've lumped Niagara with Toronto, uh, not allowing us to begin with phase two um, of some reopening, I'm just wondering if this will be a topic at the regional meeting uh, that you have this week and if, there, if you think there'll be any initiative uh, taken to get the province to perhaps revisit that. Um, you know, there's a number of businesses in Fort Erie that are struggling right now. Uh, they feel that it's very unfortunate that they've been looped into the Toronto demographic when we're nowhere in comparison uh, when you're looking at the COVID numbers. Uh, yeah, the um, actually my the regional council meeting is a week from Thursday, um, but um, I've already had a, a telephone conversation with the MPP, and uh, Dr. Herji sent out a rather lengthy email trying to explain uh, what was going on so that I would an anticipate that um, the region and the municipalities will be um, communicating with the province about the, the delays. The upsurge in cases in Niagara over the last week really arose from uh, the continued problems with some long-term care homes and the migrant workers. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, the numbers are, are quite low uh, and Niagara is pretty much on a par with other areas. But um, the Premier did telecommunicate last week um, that if he was going to open regionally, he would be looking at not only the hardest hit areas, but the, hard, the areas that are adjacent to the hardest hit areas. So I think um, it's a matter of the region um, getting the numbers back down, um, having gone past this uh, migrant worker situation, I hope, and then we'll start to see the, the changes. I can tell you that all of the municipalities have been um, working on reopening scenarios and uh, um, our uh, emergency operations group has discussed that um, every meeting. Uh, we've talked today and there was also an announcement today about the um, Alcohol and Gaming Commission uh, easing up rules with respect to expanded patios so that the Minister of Municipal Affairs was, was requesting that municipalities get a handle on that issue if there are zoning restrictions, et cetera, to try to facilitate hotel and, and, and bar owners being able to utilize uh, larger patio areas. So um, I don't know how long we'll be left out of stage two, but certainly it's a matter of concern and it's something that I fully expect that regional politicians will be taking up with the province. Thank you. Um, Councillor Dubonow. Thank you, Your Worship. And, and just to expand uh, on what um, Councillor Zanko was mentioning about the announcement today that uh, Niagara would not be moving forward with phase two. I'm just wondering, um, I know uh, about maybe quarter to six, um, the uh, acting medical officer of health um, had mentioned to a local radio station that uh, Niagara Public Health wasn't consulted and, and he actually expressed his words were, were some disappointment that we weren't uh, included. I'm just wondering, as part of these discussions with our, um, our member of provincial parliament and uh, Queen's Park, if perhaps we could get some transparency on the metrics that they're using, because there's a lot of uncertainty out there. There's a lot of confusion. Um, I know that there's been some mentions about the, the migrant uh, worker situation up in St. Catharines, but even with those numbers, we're still comparable. Um, low 2% range with Waterloo region and Ottawa, and they're both moving on to phase two. There's been a discussions about the border, but other parts near the border are opening. So it, it just seems inconsistent. And uh, I, it's very concerning when there are so many, uh, it, when we've done so well and, and we've managed to keep the curve so flat in this region to see us, um, you know, being left out when uh, a place like Kitchener or Guelph is a closer drive to Toronto than Fort Erie is, or, or even St. Catharines. So I'm, I'm just hoping that maybe uh, going forward that the region can push for the transparency on those metrics to find out exactly what they use to determine uh, why we aren't moving forward, because I, I hope it's not uh, 
related to political decisions or anything like that. So I just, I wanted to mention that, your worship. Yeah, I doubt that very much. I, I did receive an email um, late this afternoon. I didn't really get a chance to look at my emails from Dr. Herji, which I will uh, share with all of members of council. And it's quite lengthy and it goes through a bunch of information. You'll note when you look at the map, if you haven't seen the map, that Haldeman Norfolk was also kept out of stage two. That would mean Niagara would have been isolated on its own and it doesn't, there's no other comparable situation where that has occurred. I'm, I'm pretty confident this didn't have to do with politics. I'm pretty confident it had to do with safety, but I will definitely pass on to um, the regional chair and uh, Dr. Herji the request that there be some transparency on how this decision was made as it relates to Niagara. I appreciate that, Your Worship. And if I may, very briefly, I just want to thank you for your comments earlier um, during the announcements on uh, acts of kindness in our community. Um, there's been so much negativity, and rightfully so. I mean, this is a, an unprecedented situation um, related to things that have gone on um, during this pandemic. It, it has been a very um, difficult situation for all of us. And, and I'm, I'm glad you took a moment to highlight just the act of kindness and, uh, you know, the, the compassion that, you know, many people in our community are showing for each other. I think it's very important to recognize that. And I'm very, very thankful you did, Your Worship. I, I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. You're welcome, Councillor Dubinow. You know, um, in the large context of things, um, I think most of us, hopefully all of us, realize how fortunate we are and how blessed we are. And, uh, you know, we have problems, and I know it's a bit of a joke, but we have problems, they're first world problems. They're not second or third world problems that um, belabor people every day. We're not concerned about, uh, except situations like this, about where our next meal is going to come from. Uh, we, we do have people like that in our society and we should not forget that. But um, many of us are um, very, very fortunate. And so as long as we look after, and that's why my comments as well directed to the issue of diversity and inclusion it's absolutely impossible for someone with my background to fully appreciate or understand what uh, others, many others are going through only because they're different. And um, I, I count my blessings every day that we've got such, that I have such a good counsel to work with and such very experienced and good staff. So um, anyways, I don't wanna to get too maudlin, but I appreciate your comments, Councillor Dubinow. Any other new business or inquiries? Councillor Butler, and then I'll go to Councillor Noyes. Thank you, Your Worship, that was well said. Um, I have a couple of things that I'd like to raise. First one is that um, this Thursday, I'm going to be going out to the different um, beaches within, that the town of Fort Erie owns, or the public beaches with the Shoreway Walk, Shoreway Walk Association. Um, but I wanted to bring up Burley Road Beach Access because I understand that um, armor stones have been placed right into the water and now it has stopped access for some of the residents that um, normally go down to that beach. I wonder if um, our director of infrastructure could have someone take a look at that for us. No. Okay. And then um, I wonder if he could also talk about uh, where we stand with road resurfacing and um, construction. I know that that's been delayed because of, of COVID and that restrictions have been placed on a lot of the people that we've contracted out for the jobs because they've, they've had to ensure that um, um, distancing was part of the solution when they were transporting these uh, workers. So I'm just wondering if we know when it's going to start rolling out for that program. Mr. Walsh. For you, Mr. Mayor, um, we're expecting the resurfacing program to restart in the third week of June. Um, as, you, as you know, we did have a number of contractors um, have to disappear due to COVID. Uh, it's about a month now that everybody has been allowed back into work. That doesn't necessarily mean they are working or that they were prepared to work. Some of them uh, had taken other jobs delay, uh, we were pushed back a little bit. Uh, we'll expect uh, generally to complete the uh, the summer's program for all of our programs. 
Mr. Walsh, are you in Stevensville <laughs> right now? <laughs> I've got brand new internet. <laughs> uh, you got to work the bugs out. Uh, sorry. Um, back to you, Councillor Butler. Thank you. Um, and I wonder if we could find out from um, our director of planning with respect to short-term rentals, because I understand that there has been registration, but there are also those that we're finding out are not registering. Um, and the only reason we're finding out about those is because they've become problematic in our, in our town. Could you speak to that by any chance? What's the question? The question is, how are we getting them back? Um, how are we finding these people and getting them back to register? And what kind of fines are we issuing as a director? Right. So sorry about that. Okay. Great, thank you. Ms. Dolge. So we, um, when we do find out about a short-term rental that's operating um, illegally without a license, we do fine uh, for operating without a license. Um, in terms of proactively uh, through bylaw staff as well as um, the coordinator for um, gaming, I guess our licensing, he handles uh, some review of as well of short-term rentals and the proactive kind of search of of what uh, short-term rentals are operating in town without a license. Uh, it has been busy. I know he's been getting a few licenses. We had over 40 that we sent to him to kind of look into and, and contact. So we are looking at those uh, for licenses and hopefully they come in. But we, if we do go out and they don't have a license, we have been actively ticketing. And the fine is how much? The fine is $300. And do we have anybody that's, um actively going on to any of the social media, uh, internet, uh, just to check this out because that's, you can find all kinds of information on, uh, if you Google 40 degree short term rentals, you can get all kinds of information. Are, do we, are we actively doing that? Oh, I, I, and Mr. Cook, it wants to respond, but I can respond. We, if bylaw staff does have time, I know on the one rainy day that we did have, it was a bit slower in enforcement and, and uh, bylaw staff took it upon themselves to research some of that and did provide some lists of the list to uh, Mr. Stouffer. But I, I believe Mr. Stouffer is also looking actively at them, but perhaps Mr. Cook, it can respond. Mr. Cook, it. Uh, to your worship to the council. Yes, so bylaw did provide a list to Mr. Stouffer. There was more than 40 on that list, which we had, they had gone through and searched the various websites. So uh, Mr. Stouffer has con contacted every one of those to let them know there is a license required. Um, we've, we've had a, quite a few submissions as of recently. Um, the, he's got 15 that he's dealing with right now that will be issued by the end of Wednesday. Um, so all licenses at the end of Wednesday will be issued. We continue to provide that list to bylaw. So then when we do see that somebody is operating short term rental, they can, they can look at the list who has a license and not. And we're trying to be proactive as well and continue to search for new addresses that are short term rentals so that we can get ahead of this. Answer Butler. Thank you. Um, and then I have one further question um, with respect to expanded patios. And uh, I know that um, the restaurants um, uh, in the downtown core of Ridgeway um, have been suffering and uh, they're looking at ways to try to um, bring people down and also for the retail outlets. I'm just wondering if the town of Fort Erie would um, be open to discussion with respect to road closure uh, during business hours to invite uh, people in over the weekend, you know, four hours uh, at a time, if that would be something that they would consider. Mr. Cookett. Yeah, through your, your worship, uh, this is one of the items that we did talk about today at our emergency uh, group meeting. Uh, we are open, receptive to that. There's a bunch of issues that we have to resolve. We've put together, or we will be having a meeting, I believe it's scheduled for later this week with the internal staff. Um, we do have some concerns. It's not just a matter of allowing them to use the, the sidewalks. It's, it's things like, if we close the road, what do we do about transit if it's a transit route? 
What do we do about fire access for emergency services? So we're looking into all that and we're looking for a solution because um, I'm, I'm not opposed to the idea. I think, uh, I think it's a good idea, but we have to iron out all this stuff when it's, uh, you know, insurance, trip hazards, that type of thing. So we are looking at it probably this later this week, we'll have further answers for you. Okay, great. Can I ask um, if you would add one more item to consider with that? Um, would you be able to consider who will man the barricades when the road closures take effect? I think uh, Councillor Butler volunteered to do that for us. <laughs> I used to. <laughs> we will look into that as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Any other um, inquiries, items of new business? I'm sorry, Councillor Noyes. Um, thank you, Mayor Redica. I'll, I'll, my first inquiry is going to go on the short-term rentals in regards to if someone doesn't have a, a license and you know, we, we kind of tap them on the shoulder and say, you know, you know you need a license and they start um, working through the process, are they then going to be allowed to rent while this process is being worked through? Um, I find it hard to believe with all the attention that short-term rentals got last year and how occupied our council chambers was with um, a lot of short-term rentals that they did not know that come January 1st, they needed a license and they had uh, ample opportunity in, again in the, in the um, ads and that in the paper. So I'm wondering what's the status if someone says, oh, I didn't know, yeah, mea culpa, mea culpa, Give me the form and I'll fill it in. What happens then? Do so they, they my, my understanding is they get a fine if they're caught operating. So before, before they've made an application, if they've got a short-term rental, they'll be fined. Your question goes to the heart of a question that we discussed this morning. Um, and uh, that is, once the application is made, is it okay to rent while that application is being processed. I think that's your question, is it not? Yes. And so the application does include um, a variety of requirements to be met, including a fire safety plan that has to be looked at by uh, the, the fire chief or his staff. But Mr. Cookett, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let Councillor noise what position I took on this issue, um, but I think you've heard the question before. Yes. And I think you know what the answer is we're looking for. And I, I think you, you both will like this answer, but um, so, and I wasn't able to <clears throat> properly answer your question this morning because I didn't have the information from Mr. Stouffer. So uh, the process is as it is right now is if they make application or had made application because short-term rentals um, are now uh, essential and can operate, and it caught us a little off guard that we've cut those that have made submissions recently a little slack. And that's why my earlier comment that by the end of tomorrow, all those 15 will have a permit. Anybody that submits after Wednesday, they're not gonna be able to operate until they get a license from us. So um, basically two steps, those that have applied now and we'll get those out as soon as possible. Um, if, if my law was to go visit one of those that currently we are in process, we wouldn't find them until, because we're backlogged. It's, it's us that are holding them up. But after Wednesday, no, they will get fined. Okay, thank you. Um, I had another question, another inquiry. I understand that Stevensville Road here in Stevensville is going to be redone, reconstructed in the next two years, I think. I, which would be the best way to go about it if, um, if council was in agreement to ask the region to extend the sidewalks to the plaza. Uh, where the bank and the doctor's office and the pharmacy is now. Now they're planning on stocking it, I think, at the railroad tracks or Eagle Street. And I think um, that's such a busy road that I think that um, it should probably be extended to the, the, that mini plaza that's there for all the right reasons. And I'm not quite sure, do I need to make a mo notice a motion or can we just ask or does our regional rep do it? Like, how, how do we what go? I can I suggest that you send an email to me and Councillor Incina so that we can raise that? He's on the Public Works Committee, and I'll certainly raise it with uh, Public Works staff at the region to uh, to see where they are. If if they're in agreement, then I think we don't need to do anything further. If they're not, 
then I will inform you. We can we can uh, let you know, and then we can have our staff take it up. Mr. Cook, if if there, it's a regional road and the sidewalk is put in, my understanding is the region pays for the sidewalk, but long term we would be responsible for clearing it. Uh, no, that's that's not correct. So we would be responsible for the sidewalk. Um, they're, they're, they become ours right from day one. So it's our cost at the beginning and it's our cost to replace or do any repairs in the future. So then um, you would want to raise this in uh, infrastructure services. Are you on infrastructure services now? I am, yes. Oh. Yes. So next infrastructure services meeting, I would suggest you raise it. And um, your position is you, you would like that, uh, you would like staff to discuss that with the region and if necessary, have that put into the town's budget going forward. Okay, but we wouldn't be constructing the sidewalk. We would just be maintaining the sidewalk. But it sounds like we're, no, it sounds like we're gonna be paying for it. I, so we would have to pay for the extension? I see uh, Mr. Walsh shaking his head. And that's what he Mr. Cookett just said. So you're getting it in stereo. Okay, I thought he was referring to the maintenance of it the, what, well, after it was installed. No, we, we pay for it from the get-go. In any event, that's something you can take up okay. in uh, IS subdivision. Okay, thank you. Any other inquiries or items of new business? If not, then that takes us to the consideration of bylaws. Are there any items anyone wishes removed from the package? I'd like 2020 removed from the package, Councilor Dubinow, when you do first and second reading. Um, so Which one was you, that, your worship? Sorry, really quick. Uh, 50 2020. Yep, perfect. Please proceed. Sure thing, your worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Zanko, that the bylaw package containing 51 2020 to amend parks and beaches bylaw number 119 03 as amended, residing in parks. 52-2020 to amend the highway occupancy policy bylaw number 120-2015 administrative penalty. 53-2020 to amend the system for administrative penalties bylaw number 111-2019 highway occupancy policy is given first and second reading. All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Are there any questions or comments with respect to the bylaws in the package? If not, Councillor Noyes, would you proceed with third and final reading of the amended package? Um, yes, Mayor Reddick. I've moved by myself and second by Councillor Luperts that bylaw number 51 2020, 52 2020, 53 2020 are given third and final reading to be signed by the Mayor and the Clerk under the corporate seal. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. So, Councilor Dubinow, could you go back to 50 2020, please? Yeah, absolutely, Your Worship. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councilor Zanko, that the bylaw 50 2020 to amend Council Rules of Procedure bylaw number 36 26, sorry, 36 2016 as amended, electronic delegations and uh, pecuniary interest protocol is given first and second reading. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Got bylaws on the floor for any questions or comments. Councilor Lewis, I wonder if I could hand the chair to you just so that I can explain why I asked for this to be removed from the uh, package. I'm, uh, I support the amendment with respect to the electronic meetings. I don't support the um, amendment with respect to councillors leaving the room um, if there's a pecuniary interest in an open council meeting. That's just my view. That's what the law is. Um, and I understand that uh, some counselors feel that um, it's easier to leave the room so that um, those who are, those who do have an interest in the matter that we're discussing can be satisfied that we're not um, here trying to convey uh, subliminal uh, messages to others uh, on council. Um, I just don't think that that's what happens, uh, but I, I I appreciate why it came forward. I, I, I don't um, take issue with uh, the matter being put forward. I just don't happen to agree with the need for counselors to absent themselves from an open meeting. Um, having said that, um, those are my comments. Thank you very much, Mayor Redekop. Uh Any other comments, questions? Councilor Noyes? 
Thank you, Councillor Lieberts. I agree with uh, with the mayor. Um, I was I had mentioned earlier before the meeting started. I was surprised that the two of these two parts were put together because you could agree with part A but not a, agree with the um, with the with the electronic uh, like having to lead the culinary interest. That they're, they're two so totally different um, things. But anyway, um, I agree that um, we should just follow what the what the, what the rules are now under the municipal act as opposed to adding i can see that and sometimes there's like six of us six of us but there's, there's a number of us that uh, have a conflict on the same item getting up and walking out and then coming back i, I see it being problematic and somewhat um, confusing to the public who's watching people getting up and leaving etc cetera, etc cetera. I, I don't think there's a need for it i think we're all very professional, I think if we have a pecuniary interest, we declare it and we stay out of the dialogue and we do not influence the other councillor's opinions. So I, I don't think we have a need for it. Any other comments, questions? Councillor Dubinow. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Luberts. Um, just with respect to this, I, I did uh, vote in favor of this originally and, and having some discussions with some uh, colleagues elsewhere in the region. I, I believe there's some other municipalities that have similar policies as part of the rural as a procedure. I think uh, Welland may be one off the top of my head. So, I mean, I'm I'm indifferent to this. If, if, it, if it happens, it passes, I'm okay with it. If it doesn't, I'm, I'm not. My question though, uh, through you, Councillor Luberts, perhaps to the clerk, seeing as how this is going to be a change for us, and this is part of our rules of procedure. Uh, may I request that we be provided uh, a reminder as part of a, uh, a period of transition to this new rule so that if we do have a conflict and uh, we're, we're so used to, you know, ju just staying there and not participating in the discussion, if perhaps maybe we could just maybe a gentle reminder that this policy is now in effect and that uh, we, we need to adhere to it. That, that was my only concern. Do you chair to the councillor? Absolutely, we can do that. Um, and the chair can do that as well. If it's an electronic meeting, I would probably have it in the script if it was public. Um, I'd also like to point out that this matter has already been before council and it has been um, approved. And that was on March the 9th and it was a motion by councillor Butler. So I'm not introducing anything new. It's, it's something that I just needed to bring forward to get into the rules of procedure. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I appreciate it. Anything further? Uh, Councillor Zanko. I uh, thank you. I actually um, I did support the original uh, amendment, March 9th, and I actually tend to agree and believe that maybe I I supported the wrong decision then. So I'm I'm happy to. Um, I know we're not voting on the. March 9th uh, motion that was made by Councillor Butler, uh, but I actually was thinking about perhaps bringing that back to Council one day because the more I did think of it, I agree with you, Your Worship. Um, it just, it, it probably doesn't make much sense. So I'm happy, I guess my point is, is I'm happy to not support that inclusion um, on the report here tonight with the hopes that perhaps we can bring that back to, um, to revisit it. The, the March 9th motion. I'm just not sure how that's done. So through you to Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk, do you have any comment? Yes, I do. Through the chair to the councillor. Um, what we can do, you, what you're talking about is the next uh, regular council meeting bringing forward a motion to reconsider that decision that was made. So right. what I would suggest is that someone move to amend this bylaw to remove section two. Okay. And simply won't deal with the conflict of interest at all um, or the electronic meetings with conflict of interest. I'm a little hesitant about that, the last part of it, uh, because it is a totally different venue than it is to being in open chambers. Um, but you could move that. I would leave in section one because we do need section one. So we do need to pass at least that part of the bylaw. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councillor Zanko, anything further? Um, no, nothing further. I don't know. Perhaps your worship, you want to make that amendment since I think he pointed to made a motion that Mayor Redekop, you wanted to make the amendment. So I think 
Yeah, just for clarity, um, Madam Clerk, are, are you thinking that we should amend to defer that paragraph in the bylaw until July? Um, I'm not sure that we actually need to defer that part of the bylaw because you're gonna, you have to pass the bylaw. So either it's in one form or it's in another. If you take it out and then Councillor Zanko proceeds with her motion to okay. reconsider at the next meeting, then whatever happens, I can bring so you're, All right, so you're suggesting that we would simply amend to remove it from the bylaw at this time? Yes. Um, so, so, I, so I'll move that. I'll, I'll move that we remove paragraph two from bylaw 50, 2020. And we need a seconder, Madam Clerk. I'll second it. Councilor Zanko. Mm -hmm. Any comments or questions on the uh, amendment? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Seeing, uh, yeah, well, that carries. So we are back to the original. Uh, report 50-2020 as amended. Any further comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Mayor Reddick, I'll pull on the chair back to you. Thank you, Councillor Lubitz. That takes us then to uh, the confirmatory bylaw. Councillor Zanko, you have first and second reading. Excuse me? Do we not have to do the third reading for 50 2020? Oh, sorry. I thought that was on the floor. No. If I, if I can just interject here, um, I, we've had first and second. You've now amended the bylaw. I think all you really need to do is third reading as amended. Right. Yeah. right. Sorry. And that's exactly. what Council Noise is raising. Yes. Sorry. So, Council Lubert, you still have the chair for third and final reading. Uh, third and final reading. And who has that, Councilor Noise? Yes. Yes. Move yeah. by myself and seconded by Councilor Lubert that uh, bylaw number 50 2020 as amended. We are given third and final reading to be signed by the mayor and the clerk under the corporate seal. Uh, before we proceed there, uh, Madam Clerk, I seconded that motion and being the chair now, I don't know, can I second that? No, Councillor Lubert, you would need to have a different seconder. So I'll have to, uh, Councillor Dubinow will second it? Yeah, I'll second that. Uh, okay, thank you. Lubert. Okay, so seconded by Councillor Dubinow. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? That carries. All right, now, Mayor Radicop, I'll hand the chair back to you. Okay, are we on safe ground now, uh, yes. Madam Clerk? You're so we'll go, to, we'll go to Councillor Zanko. Yes, thank you. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Dubinow, that bylaw number 54-2020 to confirm the actions of council at a special meeting held on June 8, 2020 is given first and second reading. All those in favor? And opposed, that is carried. That takes us to Councillor Butler. Yes, thank Here's you. Final. Myself and seconded by Councillor McDermott that bylaw number 54, 2020 is given third and final reading to be signed by the mayor and clerk under the corporate seal. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Um, scheduling of meetings. Councillor Noyes. Yes, Mayor Redekop, we have a traffic coordinating committee meeting on Wednesday the 24th. In brackets, it says February 26th, but I'm sure it's not. It's June 24th. June 24th, right. Any other uh, meetings? There being none, then I'm going to go to Councillor Dubinow. Yes, for the uh, best part of the evening, Your Worship. Uh, <laughs> moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Zanko that council adjourns at 7.31 p.m. to reconvene into a regular meeting of council on June 15th, 2020. All those in favor, that is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you all.
Thank you.